ImageLine has introduced a new Reverb plugin called Luxiverb in FL Studio. Let's check out its features. Now keep in mind this is a beta software and the final release version may be different from what I'm showing you right now. Alright, so the plugin is divided into two main categories. The blue section over here is for the main reverb controls and in the bottom over here we have an envelope as well as a spectrum analyzer. Let's take a look at the main reverb controls. It's further divided into four sections. You have your input control, the actual reverb section, which can be activated or deactivated by clicking over here. There's also this really interesting feedback section that can also be activated or deactivated by clicking here. And lastly, an output section. I like that there is an input level control. Let's have a listen to the signal that I'm running through the reverb. I'll bring the wet down here for now. So that's the dry original sound. Now let's bring up the reverb. All right, so it seems to be fairly loud. I can reduce the input gain or increase it if I want to with this slider. But definitely there's a lot of low end because this is an entire drum loop. Let's cut the lows by introducing the slow cut. And that cleans up the reverb a lot. We can also cut the highs to make the reverb sound darker. Now technically this is not affecting the reverb output, it's affecting the input signal. You could still get high frequencies from the reverb, so this high cut is not going to completely get rid of high frequencies. Alright, next let's move on to the reverb controls. The main control here is your DK time, or RT60. You can go for a really small value here. Or make it really, really big, up to 20 seconds. What I really like about this control is that we don't hear any artifacts as we're adjusting it as the signal is going through the reverb. Very smooth. There's a brightness control over here. So I can make the reverb sound brighter or darker. The size of this room that we're emulating, the values are in meters. So the bigger you get, you start to hear some flutters. I'll increase the decay time here. But if I reduce the size, it sounds a bit smoother. You'll also get this interesting pitch modulation effect as you adjust the size. So it can be a fun parameter to automate. All right, next there's diffusion, less diffusion, not very clean, more diffusion, get a more diffuse sound. This character control is interesting. As you increase the character, you'll start to hear kind of a amplitude modulation effect on the reverb. I'll bring the dry down so we can focus more on the wet. So that's with a low character and that's with high. Almost like a delay. Alright, let's now try this with a melodic loop. This is what the original loop sounds like. I'll slowly bring up the wet. Could have a little bit more decay. There is a pre-delay control over here, so we can delay the onset of the reverb signal. And this parameter can also be set to musical values. So these are in steps or 16th notes. Could work well for a drum pattern. And next we have modulation for the reverb, so I can adjust the modulation frequency and the modulation amount. If I reduce the dry, you'll hear the modulation better. A little bit of that mix in might sound nice. Alright, next let's talk about freeze and sustain. I'm again going to change up the loop 
Let's try a vocal loop this time. Let's listen to the dry signal. I'll bring in the reverb. All right, so the three modes over here, normal, freeze, and sustain. You may have heard of freeze reverb. So if I switch to freeze, the incoming signal is held in in a small buffer, and we just loop that tiny buffer. So let's try this out. So when I switch to freeze, whatever signal was in that buffer is what we're hearing right now. This would work best as a switch. Doesn't make sense as a toggle selector. Anyway, next we have sustain, which is basically the same thing, but what happens is the buffer is constantly updated based on the incoming signal. In freeze mode, just that tiny buffer is held and we just hear that signal in the freeze. But in sustain, as long as there's signal coming into the input, the buffer is constantly updated. So that can lead to quite a lot of buildup in that buffer. So be careful with this sustain mode. Next, we have this high quality mode. So with it on, obviously, it's going to take up a little bit more CPU. If I turn this off, a little bit less CPU usage. But also, we'll notice that the high frequency tails out a lot quicker. So there's a bit more of a decay on the high frequencies with HQ on. All right, so that's the reverb section. Next, let's check out this feedback section. So with feedback, we get a delay-like control where the entire reverb signal is fed back into the reverb unit. And we have a pitch control, so you can create that shimmery reverb effect, octave above, octave down, or any value in between. There's also an EQ built in just for the feedback section. And this is the delay time. And lastly, we can also control the reverb mix. In other words, what signal is going to go back into the feedback unit? Either the dry signal or the completely wet signal. All right, I'll bring the gain up on this feedback to hear it. Let me reduce the delay time. Let me increase the pitch shifting effect. Let's set it all the way up to plus 12. So that's your classic shimmer reverb effect. Let's try this on a guitar part. Oh, there we go. So the high cut was set to a very low value. That's why we weren't hearing much of the shimmeriness. So make sure the high cut is set all the way to the highest value if you really want to hear the shimmeriness. Now it's a bit too much. I'll bring the gain down here. All right, then lastly, we have the output section. The dry and wet are self-explanatory. Here we just have a very basic EQ to EQ this reverb signal. You can adjust the frequency, the gain, and also the Q. Finally, there's the stereo widening effect here. So you can make the entire reverb mono. One point two five is the default, which is fairly wide, but we can widen it even more to two point zero. Now let's check out this envelope section, a very interesting feature built into this Luxiver plugin. So what we have here is essentially an envelope follower that can be assigned to either the wet level of the reverb or the decay time. So these two controls, the wet slider here and the decay control here. So this is based on the incoming audio signal, but you can also sidechain this. Turn this on and choose a sidechain input here. I'm going to turn this off and let's just use the incoming signal itself. So I have the drum loop going through. So 
So over here, the blue lines represent the actual envelope. And you can set the threshold. So that orange line there represents the threshold. Now I've set it to decay. Let's try wet first. So I'll bring the wet level down. And now let's hear how this envelope is going to modulate that wet signal up based on the incoming amplitude of the signal. So with the scale parameter, we're going to introduce this envelope modulation. If it's at zero, nothing's going to happen. So let's increase it all the way up to the maximum. So that's pretty interesting. So we're skipping some of the incoming audio. Maybe I should set the threshold a bit lower. So it sounds a little excessive, so I'll bring the scale down further. Pretty interesting effect. And if you set the scale to a negative value, the opposite happens. So when the signal is loud, the reverb gets ducked out. And when the signal is quiet, the reverb is louder. A bit hard to hear it with this drum loop, but that's basically what the scale parameter does. I'm going to set it back to a positive value. So there's a low cut here to cut the low frequencies of the analysis signal that is being used to generate this envelope. We can also introduce this offset, which will make the signal bipolar. So you can set the value to go up or go down. Let's actually try DK now. So we try with wet, let's try with DK. So basically this DK parameter is going to change based on the envelope signal. So you notice that currently nothing is happening. The DK is not being modulated because this red line is a straight line. The offset is set at 100%, but if I bring it down, now you can see some of that movement. And you can also hear the resulting change in the DK time as it's being modulated. You can increase the amount here. You can also shape the attack and DK of this resulting envelope here. You can extend the DK. Make it much longer or shorten it to make it very tight. Same for the attack. Increase it. Kind of smoothens out the attack there. Or we can use smooth here to add smoothing on both attack and DK. We can inverse this. So you can see this is pretty interesting. How it's doing the opposite. Almost like a side chain or a ducking like effect. Here's an example of this decay modulation but on a melodic loop and also the modulation is inverse as you can see the scale is set to a negative value. Alright so I hope you found that helpful. Now if you are new to FL Studio and would like to learn the DAW in a methodical way, I would suggest checking out my 12-week course on Berkeley Online where I go over all the fundamentals of making music with FL Studio. We cover a wide range of topics from MIDI sequencing, audio recording, mixing and mastering, sound and even video synthesis. I put a link to the course in the video description so have a look at that and I'll see you in the next one.